Right, so it's finally time to force myself away from Tears of the Kingdom for a few hours. We're gonna head out and do a quick bit of game hunting. But first we need to stop somewhere a little bit different to pick something up for the game room. Okay, so we're here. It's a place that strikes fear into the hearts of millions and millions every year having to come here. But today, it's necessary to complete our mission. You might have caught a glimpse of where we are in the time-lapse footage driving up here. But well, welcome to Ikea. I actually recorded that. I thought it was a workout. We walked for a kilometre there, so now we just need to wander these walls here and see if we can find the shells that we came for. Alright, we found what we came for. We just need to grab four of these and get out of here. Alright, so shelves acquired, mission successful, in and out in a flash actually. If you ever come up to Ikea, come at 12 o'clock in the day because it was so quiet, absolutely no queues, straight up and straight out of there. Even resisted the temptation to pick up some chocolate, so um, yeah, we have the shelves. The reason I picked them up, I actually should have probably given a bit of context. I did manage to get myself a Billy bookcase at last. Bought some extra shelves, but of course, me being me, the extra shelves that I bought were too big. So luckily we can repurpose them somewhere else in the game room. So the four shelves that are there, yeah, they're just going to want a Billy bookcase, get all those games off the ground and get them displayed nicely. So we'll work on that in the next few days and hopefully that means we'll be able to get a game room tour coming up fairly soon. But for now, we're out this way, so we might as well go. We're close enough to Fingus, so we might as well head in there, see if there's anything in the charity shops. But first, I think there's a charity shop fairly close to here, so we're going to look into that and try and stop by there and hopefully find a few games. Also, I am aware my glasses are steaming up. It's feckin' boiling today. Man, I got so excited there. I just seen rows and rows of games, seen PlayStation 2, 360, a few PS3 ones, but they were all five euro. I'd say it was fairly picked through as well. Most of what was there was probably around the two, three euro mark or less, like for FIFA's and stuff like that. So, oh well, not to worry, at least we checked it out. We'll come back another time, but let's head into Fingers and see if we've any more look there.
just one game in those tree stops. Crackdown on 360, never heard of it. It looks like it's a bit of crack. It was 3 euro, probably about what it's at. And hopefully the disc is okay. They had them all taped shut in there. So I assume it's in there. If they taped them, they probably checked to make sure the disc is there. But we have one more stop to go. We actually did really well this one the last time. So hopefully it's the same again and we come out with a pile of games. All right, unfortunately there was no giant fingers this time, just the one game, actually I must open it up and make sure it's the right disc in there while I'm here. But yeah, we did pretty well with our trip to fingers the last time. There was a few games in the first one, second stop we just seen the two or three where we got this one. I asked in all the shops if they had any extra, uh, the fella in the last shop was the one that was there the last time he found the box of games for me, so they mustn't have had anything in for a while was what he was saying. And then in another shop, one was very nice in there, she actually went into the back to have a look, but there was nothing there, so. And... <laughs> Ironically, I'm just looking at this copy of Crackdown, and the disc is cracked. I don't know if you'll be able to see it just there, but yeah, that is not good. That's absolutely no use whatsoever, but so let the charity shop have the three euro and use the case, or we'll hold on to it and hopefully find the disc another time. But yeah, we'll leave it at that for today. I was going to stop at one or two on the way home, but it's absolutely boiling now. I don't know where the heat's after coming from. So what we might do is might go back, have a shower, get changed, and maybe have a look at throwing a few of these shelves on the Billy Bookcase and have a look at how that's progressing. All right, so we're back in the game room. I mentioned the new Billy Bookcase in the car. So let's just have a quick look of how we're getting on so far and throw a few ideas out there of what we're going to do with it. So as you can see, it's still a work in progress. There's games everywhere, but at least they're off the floor now. Well, except for this shite, but we'll figure out where that's going to go soon. So I bought the extra shelves because essentially what I want to do is I just want to stack as many games onto this as I can. I think by the time I put the shelves in, I should be able to get about 500 games on there. So at the moment, I might kind of leave it pretty much the way it is. At the moment, I have sort of all the Xbox stuff here that runs down into the Wii and then shoots across to Wii here. So what I might do is, in order to sort of preserve the shrines for a bit longer, I probably will have to park them at some stage to make room for more games. But I think what we'll do is we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, so we've four more shelves. So we're going to have 10 shelves here. So yeah, we should get about 500 games on this thing. So what I might do is I might stick with primarily PlayStation for here. On the top shelf, what I might do is I might leave the Commodore there. And then I have a few Saturn and Mega Drive bits over there. Not an awful lot, but we might sort of transition into those just to kind of start with the oldest stuff up the very top. And then we might work our way down PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, which we've shared loads of now. We've nearly 200 games on that and then maybe PlayStation 3 and transition down into PlayStation 4 and that should fill the shelf up there. So it'll pretty much give us like a massive sort of gamed corner here where everything is here, well except for the cartridge based stuff, but that'll give us more sort of scope then to display the cartridgey stuff there. So that's the plan for the moment anyway. If you have any ideas, if you've got any of these bookcases, we've done it and invented with them, let me know what you've done with them. But for now, I think we'll run with that and see how it looks. It's been about a week since we hit fingers and found nothing. I haven't had a chance to game hunt. I've been in work pretty much every day since. I do have an Ikea bag of trade-in in the boot ready to go, but I'm not quite ready to pull the trigger on it just yet. We're going to keep the faith in the local shops. We're going to hit the usual five here today and hopefully we can find some games. Bit of a 360 shovelware pickup when games are your reach and now I can't leave them behind. I'm pretty sure I don't have 
Well, I don't have Sleeping Dogs, I don't have Dragon Age Inquisition, and I'm not sure about the Saints Row games, but these were all a euro each. All of them were complete, and the discs in them are absolutely perfect. So for euro each, we can't go wrong. And sure, Call of Duty Black Ops 3 will give us a few quid back in trade anyway, so we'll pretty much get them for next to nothing out of pocket. But good start, let's keep going, see what's in the Jack and Jill. Well, that's the first for this channel, a PS5 game in a charity shop. They asked me would I pay four euro for it because it's one of the newer ones. I had absolutely no problem with that whatsoever. This is in perfect condition. A couple of fingerprints that we just need to rub out, but this one, I don't have a PS5, so you'll have to tell me what you think I should do with this. CEX will give me 15 in cash or 20 quid in trade for it, no problem whatsoever. So should I bring it up there, get a few quid for it? Should I trade it for something? Should I hold on to it for a little while? The Resident Evil the games, these the modern ones, do they hold value or go up and down? I don't know, I think it's maybe just the PS1 ones, but I don't think it's too long before we start seeing loads of PS5 games in the charity shop. So maybe we should just take the 20 quid trade for it while it's still got a decent value. But yeah, that's what, one, two, three, four, five, six games now. So we're doing okay. We'll head down to the Vincent's in Kulak and then jump out the swords and see if we can pick up anything else for the rest of the day. We're having a good day today. We've picked up games in every stop that we've been to and it's just progressively getting better. We got the PS5 game in the last one and they had some nice PSP titles in that one. They had a few Xbox One games. They were looking for five euro each for them. There was no value there to pick them up to trade for something. So we just left them behind for someone else. But these PSP games are pretty decent. Juiced Eliminator was one that's probably worth about three, five euro. Just grabbed it for the collection because it has a manual in it. And I do like a racing game on the PSP. So grab that. There was a couple more in there that we left behind. I think from Russia with Love, I have about 20 different consoles at this stage. I have it for the original Xbox, I have it for PS2, I have it for something else. So again, left it in there and a Harry Potter Wii game that we already have as well. But the two picks of the bunch definitely are these two Metal Gear games of the PSP, Metal Gear Acid and Metal Gear Portable Ops. Both of these have the manuals. They look in really nice conditions. So they are two quality additions to the collection. So we're absolutely flying. Let's hopefully keep the streak going. Let's head down to Swords and hopefully we get some more stuff there. Right, that's the field stop over. We're back on the road.
nothing in sorts was this time. I was tempted to pick up that all-star cheerleader and do another little balance board skit, but that probably would have been a bit much even for this channel. Would have had to dust off the two too and all, so no point. But we'll leave it at that for this one. We'll go back to the house. There's a couple of monthly subscription boxes that I need to catch up on. So we'll have a look at what's in those. And we have a mystery box that's arrived as well. So we'll open that and see what's in there. And see us back in the game room. So we're back in the game room. The mystery box I mentioned hasn't quite arrived just yet. It is due at some stage today, but I want to get a video out this evening. So we're gonna go ahead and just have a look at everything that's come in over the last few months. And we'll keep that for the next video or else we'll do like an Instagram or TikTok job or something like that. But the main stuff that's come in, you can see up here, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll probably see seeing posts about it. I didn't need to do an unboxing with all this stuff. There was plenty of them out there, but we got the collector's edition, Tears of the Kingdom. We got the console, we got the Amiibo, I don't know if it's too high up in the shot there, but we got everything. So that's been the main thing that's come in. That's been the main thing that's been keeping me busy for the last few weeks. Between work and trying to squeeze in Tears of the Kingdom, there's been barely any time for game hunting. But we got some in, and you've seen we got some games. But outside of the game hunting, I got one other sort of main thing, and the rest of the stuff that's come in that you haven't seen has been all monthly video game subscription boxes. I haven't really been keeping up with doing those on TikTok and stuff like that. I need to get back into shooting them. But we'll have a look at three months worth of those. But I did get this NES Mini complete in the box. I actually won this. I'm on a Facebook group that runs sort of competitions and draws a few things a week. Same page that I won the GameCube on that I get away. I'm not giving this one away. I'm actually going to keep this. This is going to look nice on the shelf. Probably would consider some sort of a trade for it if there was a decent offer out there. But I actually probably prefer an original NES because I've got up to about 10, 12 carts now. So it would be nice to have an original NES console and hook it up. I have this vision for like a little retro corner over there with sort of an old school TV and like the CRT TV and like the Commodore NES, all those sort of things. So maybe one day, but in the meantime, this is nice to have. I have a strategically placed cardboard box here, so you'll see me lifting things in and out. Um, but moving on to monthly video game subscription boxes. The magazines, two of them out of the three boxes this time. We've got two copies of Computer and Video Games magazine. This one is obviously from 2000 because it's got the preview for FIFA 2000 on the front of it. And then I don't think I'll be displaying this one. I don't think I'll be allowed to display this one, but this is from, where is it? It says here there's a look at the Xbox machine. So I think the Xbox original one came out in 2000, 2001. So it's probably from that era, but there we go. So that's the two magazines. We've got a nice little mini library I'm building up now. I think I'm about 14 or 15 up on the shelf there. So I'll have to come up with like a little, maybe sort of magazine rack or something like that to sit them in and display and then they'll be easy to kind of flick through and pick them up and have a read of them. But yeah, outside of that, we're on to three months. Well, obviously they're included in the monthly video game subscription boxes, but three months worth of games from those. Starting off going all the way back to the Commodore 64 and a copy of Forgotten Worlds. I think I actually did have this, but I'm not sure I automatically went to look up there because that's where I've had the Commodore games for a few weeks but I've just moved them to complete this PlayStation shelf. You'll see that in the game room tour that's coming soon. But yeah, Forgotten Worlds, this was a class little shooter sort of game. So, nice one to have for the Commodore collection. We have a copy of Mortal Kombat on the SNES. Now, I actually already have Mortal Kombat. So, I'm not sure whether to trade this. Maybe we'll... See if anyone has a SNES game or a couple of SNES games they want to swap for it. Or maybe we'll consider putting it in the giveaway. We'll wait and see. I will do a little update. Now, I won't do an update at the end of this one. There's a few bits gone into it, but I think by the time the next video comes up, we'll be a little bit closer to that giveaway. And a reminder, if you haven't been watching the last few videos, there's going to be a massive giveaway soon. We're about 60-odd subscribers away from 1,000 subscribers, and we're going to be just giving away a box of games and goodies. So make sure you're subscribed to catch that video when it comes out and be with a chance of winning. But you might see Mortal Kombat in the competition. You never know. We have, this is actually class. We have another Commodore 64 game and this is Predator 2 in the box. I love these sort of big cardboard box versions of the Commodore 64 games and it even has a manual in it. It's actually minty, like that is practically brand new. So really nice thing to have for the collection. That'll look really nice up on the, again, I'm kind of looking but not giving that away, but the Commodore games have found a new home over there. So. This will display really nicely with the other bits that's there. Next out of the box, I'm just kind of reaching and grabbing random stuff. A copy of Honeycomb Beast on the DS. This is actually the NTSC one. It's interesting to see the difference in the, the boxes. The OG DS boxes are a lot thicker in the PAL versions. They're a lot slimmer on the NTSC ones. I actually think I prefer the slimmer box. Much more similar to the 3DS box. Funnily enough, I think I have about 10 completing box well, probably more with all the Zeldas and stuff like that, but original DS games, I don't have that many. I think that's one I actually found in the charity shop, so 
I don't know, is this actually a good game? Does it trade well? We'll have a think about it. We'll either put it in the trade pile or we might just put that in the giveaway pile as well. Next out of the box, it's a Mega Drive game and it's Sonic Spinball. Now, I did play all the OG Sonic games on the Mega Drive back in the day, but I don't think I played Sonic Spinball. So we'll have to pop that in and have a go of it. More Mega Drive goodness now. We've got a copy of Mickey Mania. This is fully complete and in really nice condition as well. I think pretty much every complete or every boxed Mega Drive game that we've gotten from the retro gaming store, I think they've nearly all been pretty much complete and all of them still have like the hang tabs and you always see the little Sega sticker on the side, so that's really cool. A couple of NES games next. This is a classic, this is a must have for any NES collection. It's a copy of Bionic Commando. And another popular title, it's a copy of Rad Gravity. Tell me down below which is your favorite of those two NES games. And we keep going with another OG DS game. This is a PAL one this time, and this is Toy Shop Tycoon. Not one I know anything about really, to be honest. I assume it's just some sort of, you know, run a toy shop, upgrade it, open up more shells, stuff like that. So we complete with the manual. And we're getting near the end now. Another SNES card. This is one that we didn't have. This is Zool. I have seen it about. I don't think it's an overly expensive one, but I think it's like a sort of a platformer that I've had my eye on. So I'm looking forward to having a go at that. What's to say? Ninja of the Nth Dimension. So there you go. We have hiding in the corner here, a little GBA game, a copy of Tiny Toon Adventures Wacky Stackers. Two games left. We have, once again, Mega Drive game, fully complete, hang tab, no Sega sticker this time, but a copy of Rise of the Robots. I did remember seeing this on the shelf back in the day, but I've never actually played it. And I did love an L fighting game back in the day, so looking forward to popping that in as well. I keep saying looking forward, but <laughs> having the time to play all these games. Sometimes I just go on a little mad once sit down and play like six or seven games for 20 minutes or so. But yeah, it's sad, that's pretty much all we have time to do nowadays. Unless it's Zelda, of course, let me put like endless hours and stay up unnecessarily late to play, but you look. They come out once every six, seven years, so it has to be done. But last but not least, this is a class one actually for the ever growing PS2 collection behind me, and it's a copy of Shadow the Hedgehog. This is fully complete with a really crispy manual in there as well. And I imagine the disc is following suit, and it is a perfect disc. So yeah, that's everything that's come in over the last three months. Hopefully the mystery box arrives this evening and we can get maybe, maybe we'll do a little bonus sort of short or something like that next week to keep us going in between videos. But I mentioned before, there's a few bits coming up. We do have a game room tour coming soon. I know I've been saying it for a few months and a lot of people are looking forward to seeing it, but we just have a few little tweaks that we want to make. And I really want to plan this one out and do like a proper good video for you. So hopefully it'll be all worth the wait. But that's it for this one. A quick reminder again, if you've made it this far, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, help us get to that 1000 and get this giveaway kicked off. So thanks again, and we'll see you again soon. Cheers.